Welcome to the Songwriters Across Texas podcast. This state has a lot to offer, and music is one of its greatest exports. On this podcast, we get to know songwriters through their stories and hear some of their music. Today, we're at Arlen Studios, and my guest is Ginger Lee. I'm Carl Anderson, and this is the Songwriters Across Texas podcast. Born in San Antonio into the sixth generation of musicians, Ginger Lee's mother and two aunts were the Cone Sisters, local celebrities who played every major event. She grew up on stage, behind stage, strangely able to take naps on little corners of loud bars. Her own band started when she was nine, and she did it with her brother, cousin, and friend. But by the time she went to college at UT, she wasn't sure if she really wanted to go into the family business at all. She really loved problem solving and language, and she considered going into the CIA. Only she started playing gigs with John Pointer and Sarah Dashu, and they were great. They were very well received, and it was hard to say no. A music career that now spans her whole life, Ginger also has hosted six years of Formula One race parties. She does interior design work, and she played Maureen in the Zach Scott Theater presentation of Rent in 2010. It's my great pleasure to welcome to the show, Ginger Lee. Here we go. State of the emergency between life and love crippled by ecstasy alone waiting for light to come wanting the burn to cease you got the best of me again Why are you still running through my veins? Why are you still hitting me so damn strong? Why are you all the songs that I sing? Still feel your breath on me. My hands wrapped around. Pushing and pulling again Still I am never free Consumed by you You got the best of me again Pushing the needles in Why are you Still letting your ink run free Your artwork's permanent on me Why are you Still running through my veins Why are you Still hitting me so
No, 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 no. Crippled by ecstasy. State of emergency. My first and my last thought. Every day. That was so good, you guys, man. Holy Thank cow, you. Ginger. Awesome. Thank you. Gorgeous harmonies. It seems like you got, it's It's not like you guys just got together, is it? You have been playing for a couple of minutes. We have been playing for a couple of minutes together, and that's the beauty of music. It's like, uh, you know, we just, we can't leave each other. We just, we're always here with each other, and um Whenever I have to substitute for a show, somebody can't make right. it or something, it's really, it's, there's so many great players out there. Obviously, And the yeah. subs that we can get are just fabulous, especially here in Austin. But it's always weird because we, we've been playing together so much that we can read each other, you know, quite well. Absolutely. Yeah. I, but yeah, I see bands like that with Adam, like... I've seen John D. pretty recently and Mike Hardwick couldn't be there. So uh, he had a different backup band and I was like... What's going on? <laughs> yeah, know, like, yeah. It throws everybody off a little bit, but that's also kind of exciting. I mean, it was you know. exciting, and yeah. that, it was actually really good. I was like, "Wow!" It's in, it, I think he had Joey uh, playing drums for him that night from yeah. Uh, Fastball. Yeah, and uh, you know that's part of what's cool about Austin, isn't it? Sure. That all the different players and you, but you got so Stuart Cochran um, on the on the piano keyboards, yep. and uh, John Pointer, yep. uh, guitar vocals. Um, these guys have been, you know, I mean, they've been a fixture here as well. Stuart yep. used to be in Casey Crowley, my ex's band. Yep. Uh, John's been all over the place. Yeah. So I love that that you guys still have a unit. We can't live without each other, you know, and, and we're all very close friends, too. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, John and I, <clears throat> we met when we were studying together in Rome uh, oh, on wow. a UT, the very first UT Rome study abroad program. Holy cow. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. And then we started playing together right after that when we were at university. And um, it wasn't that long later that I met Stuart and we recorded an album, the Charge Laughing album, uh-huh. at his studio uh, with Spencer Gibb. Right. And uh, yeah. So it's. Gotta it's, get Spencer on here. Yeah, we do. We do. It, As a fun yeah, part of your. That's your part yeah, of it. You yeah, are part sure, of it. Sure, sure. Damn right. Um, but yeah, so like, you know, everybody goes way back. You know, there are a lot of young people in town that are new. Yeah. Uh, that are hitting the new venues. So there's a lot of newness and yes. things like that in Austin. The city's changed a ton, it as sure we know. Has. Um <laughs> But it's really great. You know, I, I love it when I get to see my friends play and sometimes we hop up on stage with each other right. and, you know, we've been playing together for so long that we know each other's music and whenever my friends write new songs, I'm like, wait, 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 uh-huh. wait, I need to know this song so in case I can jump up on stage with you at the Saxon Pub or something, Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah, so that's But that's we- another cool part about Austin is that oh. you, you all know each other so well so that you... You can fit in in this set that's and, right. as a guest, and that's always as a as an audience member. That's always been one of my it's pretty exciting, sort of favorite right? Things, yeah. I love it. I love it. If I'm playing and Patrice Pike or Shelly King or Wendy Colonna or Carolyn Wonderland or someone like that is yeah. there, you know, yeah, exactly. I, I just I just rattled off all the girls. Uh, there's a lot of guys too that you know, I, Guy Forsythe will hop right. up on stage with me or vice versa, and it's just really fun. yes, exactly. But I'm glad you rattle off all the girls. And there's a, there's a, actually a, there's a. <laughs> The pa- you know the pack? Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, so right. Yeah. But I lo- I was they reminded me of y'all when they first got yep, together. Me too. It reminded me of that. Uh, me when, too. You, when you guys were doing well, those. Just so your audience it. knows, like I had a uh, I have a brand called Love Love Austin Texas. It started as a retail store. Right. And we built a stage. I built it with my own hands. Actually, uh, it was mm-hmm. on South First. Now it's like about to be a big condo building, but, um, it was a cute house and we, we had a retail shop there and we would do love on the lawn outside and the whole crew we just mentioned, uh, plus many others would perform there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, then I, I would do love different love programs and the most recent, the most, uh, the one that I keep going the most is love at the state side, but it does include, 
Patrice Pike, uh-huh. Shelly King, Wendy Colonna, you know, that crew, uh, Carolyn Stunham, and I've done lots of love shows like that. So when I, that's cool. And we, you know, song swap like that and sing together. So it does remind me of Pack. When I go see them on right. Thursdays at Saxon Pub, you know, I'm like, and the talent level is hey. similar too. Like that was one of the uh-huh. things about the Pack. I was, you know, you, you, you go, how's this going to play? They are all good. You're like, but they're, that they're just so good, just like they're y'all great. were. They're yeah. great. Individually, they're all great. Together, they're great. They, they love on each other the way you guys did too. Yes, like, you indeed. Know, I think you know, people get competitive, and as and women can get real competitive with each other because yeah. unfortunately you get pitted against each other because they made you're made to feel like there's only room for one or two of you. Well, it's true. I mean, the way I've always personally seen it is that we're all better off if we uh, commingle our audiences, mm-hmm. and that's the sort of the business personal business side of it like the music part of it is phenomenal right right but i've always thought you know if we commingle our audiences we're only helping each other grow Mm -hmm. and grow our audiences and um so we've done that and i've i've gone on tour you know i've taken patrice with me to italy i've gone on her tours with her all over the united states wendy and i have done that too carol and i have done that you know it's to me it makes sense and not just not just on making sense it's also freaking fun you yes. know and we sing together and you never know what's gonna happen and feed, off, and each feed off each other yeah. and it's beautiful yeah it's it is, really that's cool. so cool let's t- let's talk about like your early days like Uh-oh. like how you grew <laughs> you grew up uh you were born a sixth generation musician so yeah. like you were just uh always on stage or near stage or sleeping under a table near a stage yeah. or something like that so why, why don't you it's hear true from you? it's true I, I i cut my teeth on sawdust floors <laughs> hey that's a line i don't write that, that is, and I, let's to write, write it down, down so i don't you? forget it yeah i cut my teeth, teeth on sawdust, sawdust floors floor. dang like that's it. good You're always writing songs that's um, right yeah so my mom's side are it's many generations of musicians from my mom's mom's side uh-huh. and uh her original my grandmother's original name is henry maiden name is henry and the henry happy seven was like her father and his brothers they're all from austin cool and uh, the last one that, that was living not that many years ago i went up to uh Brookdale, where he was about 100 years old. Wow. Playing his trumpet with the guy that came and played music. That's And cool. I have a phenomenal video. It's probably on my Instagram or something. But there's a lady in a wheelchair, and she's dragging herself on, like, what would be the dance floor. And her hands are just wow. fluttering. Like, she must have been a ballerina or something. But And he's over there all hunched over, but playing that he trumpet. He can make it sound. He was making it. Yeah, and it wasn't perfect. But, right. I mean, you're 100. Yeah. And, um, yeah, no, he was incredible. So anyway, that whole side of the family, that was, then their, their, my grandmother was Jane Henry and, and, uh, she had a, she was the big band singer in San Antonio. I mean, any big band that came through, that was, you know, her jam. Right. She and her father had a, um, a radio show on one of the major networks, whatever they were at the time, CBS, NBC, whatever. Right. Um, there was that, only three, I think. And there were only <laughs> there, three. And yeah. so, yeah, she was about 16 or so. And then, um, they had my, she and my grandfather had my mom and my two sisters, the Cones sisters, Cones sisters. Jill, Jan, and Jackie. Yeah. And they are so cute. They're a lot of fun. They're blonde Texas bombshells, uh-huh. southern girls with blue eyes, and can sing three-part harmony like nobody's business. So we grew up in that. Right. And um, Like the, kind of like the RKO. So like, like you think of like the gals that would go overseas, with, you know. Well, uh, they and, did and, some USO tours. Uh, they did one with Bob Hope out in California, yes, for example. Yeah. Thinking, yeah. But yeah. They, also, they also were scoring like RCA records deals and stuff mm-hmm. and with Barry Beckett doing production and stuff up in Nashville. Um, and, but you know, when we were growing up, they had a full, a full show where it was the horns and they right. would change costumes and they would go from like, uh, Andrew sisters to country songs and everything in between. And they really were a blast. They played wow. everything that was anything cool. and, you know, they were on the radio and all stuff. So that's how we grew up. And, um, Rules didn't apply, you know, because mm-hmm. we were the Cones family. But uh, it was it was really quite a privilege and uh, a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Sure. A lot of texture. And then for my generation, of course, you know, I'm a musician. And there are six of us from my generation. And one of them, my cousin, who I had my kid band with. Right. Mickey Jack Cones. He's a big producer in Nashville and uh-huh. uh, runs a label up there. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's in the blood. Mickey and Jack Jones? Cones. Cone, oh, Mickey, Cones Jack, right. Mickey Jack Cones. Mickey Jack Cones. That's another, good, like, that should be in the song with I Cut My Teeth on Sawdust Floors. Well, he did. He Mickey cut his Jack teeth on Jones. Sawdust Floors with me. I mean, yeah. You know, we all did. But, uh, yeah, it was great. It was great growing up in that world, you know. 
Super cool. It is super cool. Not everybody gets that. And so you yep. were literally born into and uh, It's like when, the Nelson family. It's the same right. thing. You know, it's like right. it, the music keeps going, you know. Right. And you and you didn't there wasn't a party that didn't think you shouldn't do it too. Like, right? You, yeah, of course. Although there was because well, we talked about when you when you went to <laughs> college, you went, I don't know, right? Well, yeah, I'm also I'm I'm a little bit of the black sheep of the family mm-hmm. and that I'm I'm very academic and cerebral mm-hmm. um, and, you know, actually am kind of an introvert. Uh-huh. By the, the way, this time. T-shirt's from Mama Bird and Company. It's, it's a local company, Mama Bird and Company. Oh, Mama Bird? Uh-huh. I've heard of Mama Bird. That's that, yeah. I like that T-shirt a lot. I, I will go back to the, the not doing music potentially thing, but... To to bring yeah. this in, this is a good point. Like I'm I'm a I'm a very much a brainiac. I'm a book nerd. I'm a scientist. Yeah. I'm a you know you and I are similar in that way. We love to learn yeah. and, and and you know I'm not a singular person at all about anything. Right. So and I am a little bit of an introvert in that that's where I uh, recharge. Yes. Um, you need to recharge. Yes. It's, if I don't recharge, I can't do this. You can't do it. Right. And some people just can just go all the way through it. And I, and it's not just about can or can't. It's also desire. Like, I like my downtime. I like my alone I, time. I need it. I, when yeah. I say downtime, that's a, right. I never alone do downtime. Time. It's alone time, but I'm always doing something, whether I'm writing or reading or on the computer creating or uh-huh. doing something crazy. And um I was like that as a child, uh-huh. growing up in that big, loud family. Wonderful, fun, loud family. But and you, I, you felt so loved that it was like, I need space sometimes to yeah. be by myself. That's But again, it's nice that you got to have that because not everybody does. Oh, I would go into my room and shut the door and do whatever I needed to do. And then I'd be like, okay, now I'm ready to go back out and dance monkey dance and have a good time and yes, join exactly. in to the, the party or Ex- the thing, yeah. whatever was going on. I totally relate Still to that, that way. Still that way. But yeah, so when I went to university, I was really interested in trying something else because I had been around music in the, in the industry and in the business my whole life. And I know how I could see how hard it was right. and what a challenge I could also see and knew how beautiful and fulfilling it could be. So it was a tug. So when I was at university, I p- continued to perform. And yeah. after John and I met, we did shows together. And you were, uh, you guys were both at university, right? We were at UT yeah, together. Yeah. yeah. And we did shows wherever, you know. Austin Java Company yes. had, you know, the original oh, yeah. had shows out back and we would do the Caucus place. Club on Riverside. <laughs> yeah, I love uh, it too. Caucus Club, yeah, yeah. exactly. And uh, we played all There were a lot of, of open mics then too. Yeah, we weren't doing open mics. We just went straight into oh, that, okay. to drawing a crowd. Like You didn't do the open mic thing, huh? No. I, I, a lot of people loved those old mics. Okay, I'll tell you what my open mic version of my life was. When I was like a freshman in college... I had a I fake know. ID, uh-huh. and I would go sneak in to the gay bars when they would do the drag sh- the talent right. shows. It was right. mostly drag right. queens. I would go to the mall, right. to one of those little recording studio places, and pay for a cassette of the backing music right. to a Bonnie Raitt tune or the Judds or Bette Midler or something. And I would go enter the contest at the gay bar <laughs> with my ID that said I was 26. And um, are they going to come arrest me now that I'm admitting this? I hope uh, so. I yeah. mean, that'd be good press. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I would do contests all over the place, not just gay bars. But right. That was my favorite little thing. And when and the drag queens really didn't like me. No. No, but I, you know, because I you would. had all the parts already. <laughs> Well, it could I barely had the parts. <laughs> barely had the parts. Uh, but no, I mean, you know, because I was actually singing, and no, I'm not saying anything. I love drag shows. Do not get me wrong. I think there's a great talent there. But you um, were there for, I was yeah. singing for real, and and uh, I would win often, and they didn't like me very much for that. But okay, so that you was my version of open mic. Yeah, yeah, I was taking their trophies. Yeah. Well, and plus you were on the, you know, you're on stage. You never, you didn't need an open mic to go feel good about yourself, or because you were on stage your whole life. Yeah, you know, I mean, it was just normal. It was like breathing. I mean, I say that, but when I was the, you know, singing lead songs in my band when I was nine, we were called the Gospel Gang. The Gospel <laughs> Gang. Where did you play in the church? Did you play outside the church? Too? We did play outside the church. Yeah, we played parties and stuff like that. You know, it wasn't a long career as the right. Gospel Gang. Well, but so, what kind of songs are you playing? Oh, I, I would sing like, don't it make my brown eyes blue and um, stuff like that. Yeah, you know? that's, that's and, good. I oh, like my it. gosh. There were a few songs like, 
I think I did uh, Mama, He's Crazy. Uh, and I remember being nervous. I was nine, right? And my mom would stand on the side of the stage, and every now and then I'd be like, look at her. I would look at her like, help, give me the note. You know, uh-huh. and she'd come singing in my ear, and I was like, okay, I got it now. That's great, Isn't though. that funny? Yeah. And I played tambourine. Uh-huh. Woo. You still play tambourine, don't you? Well, I'm way better at it now than I was when I was nine. I guess. <laughs> but, um, and Mickey was in that band. My brother played bass. We all sang. Right. Everyone in the band sang. Um, and it was really cute. And we, we had rehearsals like every Wednesday or whatever day of the week it was at a family friend's, the uh, keyboardist parent's house. And I, I jokingly say that I think that all of our parents put this together so they could have an excuse to get together for happy hour. For sure. That's how, um, that's how it went in my neighborhood. Yeah. Absolutely. No, they were really proud of us, and, and it was really fun to do that. So, And then, of course, I went into, uh, you know, I was always singing events, and I was, you know, st- uh, <laughs> Typically winning first or second place, usually it was right. like it was first, second, first, second, first throughout my school at the talent show and things like that. You mm-hmm. know, um, I'd get up and sing with my mom and aunts sometimes and we were just always in it. And um, then I came, you know, when I went to university, when I came up here for UT, I started performing uh, the shows I was talking about. And then I met John and we were playing together and it quickly grew and. Um, into, you know, having a, a strong audience and right. starting to bring band members in, things like writing songs. I mean, my uh-huh. first, very first record was like 1997. It's called Ginger Lady. Ginger Lady, yeah. Do you remember the studio next to the original Austin Java Company? I, uh-huh, yeah. And That's where you recorded? Uh-huh, yeah. and Pointer play guitar and cello, and wow. it's so cute. I listen to, uh, when I hear tracks, I'm like, sounds so young. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, so it is. It, I love actually because you know I've got like I wrote a novel on uh, like when I was in my late twenties, and I and all the early stuff that you look at, you're like, I appreciate it, you know. Yeah. And I, I'm not sure I need to show it to everybody, <laughs> but I'm like, I love that that that's there. I needed yeah. to do that. You yeah, know? you have. I mean, everyone needs a jumping off point for anything they do. You have to dive in at some point, right? Yeah, exactly. And we were recording, you know. On real, on real, you know, the real, the tape. Yeah, yeah and I'll, you know, you had to. The sliders would automate. Now we do all everything digital, but, um, but that was really cool. But I, that was when I was at college, and I was like performing, but I really wanted to exercise like this other side of my right my intellect. And yeah, um, I'm really, I, I I love that about you, the CIA that desire. You know, yeah. like that's not too many people come up to you and tell you that. Well, I mean, I was on track. As a matter of fact, and um, that's really what I wanted to do. But I'm telling you, it would have been safer to be in the CIA than to be a touring musician. <laughs> yeah, ex- a lot safer, probably. Yeah. Yeah, but that you know, that's that's a part of my life, and I I, I continue to really enjoy exercising that part of my what brain. What is it in a lot about that? Part, like, like, what is it about that world that you like so much? That that fascinates you or, or pulls you in? Well, I'm a problem solver very much. I I love formulas. Like, I was laughing with a woman who's a PhD biochemist and I was I said to her I said one of my favorite courses ever in school and in college was chemistry because I love solving chemical equations right like oh, wow. solving problems like that I look at the world very much in a systematic way right so music is numbers right uh, yes, language is. is numbers yes it is chemistry numbers and so there's a formula to things there's a rhythm that goes to everything there are melodies that go to everything but it all fits into some sort of a formula and exactly. You know, I sometimes have to pull myself away from thinking like that and, and just like relax. Right. But um, that's but very much my mind. But you also need some outlet for it. So yeah, well, language, language is a formula. So yeah. Uh, my idea, my ideal situation at the time when I wanted to do intelligence was to be able to use my linguist, my linguistics right. skills, which I just screwed up, which is hilarious. <laughs> um, but anyway, and and do that. I also, you know. I, I love observing people and observing situations. Right. And um, so I do use that, though, every day when I'm performing. I use it. I observe the audience and, and really kind of— Well, we're glad you didn't go into the CIA, Ginger. Well, maybe, maybe I am. I mean, well, I am. I'm glad I don't know about it then. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to take care of something. No, I'm kidding. No, I, I'm so grateful that I, I, I continue to do music and recorded 10 albums and toured all over— the world yeah. exactly. I mean, hello. I, let's do let's do another song, and then we're going to talk about okay. those touring the world in those ten damn albums. All righty. Same thing. All right, everybody. 
This one's called Rain Down. There's a ticking of the clock Like my heart beats on speed As I wait for your call You baffle even God With your smile, your charm, your alarming tone Oh, you saunter through your life Feet off the ground, boxing gloves and a high heels make the sound of the ticking of the clock. Like my heart beat on speed as I wait for your call. Surprise, you are an angel in disguise. You leave a thousand red kisses on a thousand white faces abroad, just like a sweet candy cane. You look like you're going from where you came dressed for any occasion. You leave your dresses in a thousand suitcases, ticking up the clock. Like my heart beat on speed as I wait for your call.
You got uh, that song's awesome. Rain down. Uh, I like it because everybody got their little. You know, there was Stuart got a nice piano. I was really keen on it. Awesome. And then John got to play a solo. And then you did that nice thing at the end. I was like, this is one of those songs where everybody gets there to shine. You know, when you see us in, as a, in a full band capacity at say Saxon Pub or somewhere. I love to change things up on the fly. Like I'm, I don't typically uh, play every show to a formula. I just talked about loving formulas, but right. when it comes to music, it's really fun to sort of break the rules a little bit. Absolutely. And so, and I love featuring musicians. I mean, they're so good. And I don't think that my shows are all are about me. They're about the audience right. and the band and everyone getting to shine. And so it's really fun. Like certain songs, you can really let people go off and do their thing. And right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. Um, yeah. So let's talk about uh, your records and your touring history and what's in your theater and, and all that. Okay. The, 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 the pro stuff. Okay. So John and I were playing together a bunch in college. And then uh, I was actually, I took over the booking of a venue right off campus, uh, and just because I, I could do it and knew a lot of great musicians right. and, and so on and so forth. And uh, this gal, you know, sent in her her, inf- her stuff, her EPK, or no, EPK, we didn't have that then, her, like, Tapes. cassette tape. Yeah. yeah. And her name was Sarah Dashu, and I got up and sang with her at one of her shows, just on the fly, mm-hmm. song I knew, and it was just golden i mean it was right. just the way our voices sounded together it's like me and john too like we just yes. have this thing where it's like they, they blend so well and so sarah and i started performing together yeah. and we <laughs> we both had cas- cassettes at the time and we soon after it was cds yeah god i feel old um <laughs> we had eight tracks <laughs> and um we would i would make a thing probably in word because i now i can do photoshop but at the right. time and you know did a flyer and stuff and we sent out these packets and went on tour in california okay and did a whole west coast tour and it was a blast wow, and nice. in the meantime we had submitted to a festival down in new zealand in auckland oh wow and we got accepted to this festival elvis costello a bunch of big run dmc it was like a really cool festival what a bill and we got we got picked to to do this festival but then we were like Oh shit! Like, how do we pay for this? Right. So we sort of just got the word out and had and some fans and people pitched in and got you know our pre, airline pre, again pre uh, what do you call that when you hustle crowd up? crowd sourcing crowd funding crowd funding yeah exactly and we crowdfunded in the ancient way he did it yeah <laughs> which was like I think we probably mailed postcards uh, no yeah. who, who knows um, but we ended up getting to do that festival Sweetwater Festival I think that's what it was called that's great you, uh, so you did you. Got enough money to take a band to oh, New yeah, Zealand? Oh, yeah, yeah. We went down there and no, we hired musicians in, in New Zealand. Okay. So we didn't take our guys, but, um, and we played the festival and we set up a whole six week tour all over, uh, mostly the North Island, a little bit in the South Island. Fun. And yeah, it was incredible. And that was, that was amazing. And then I remember the same year probably we came back and it was South by right after we came back because it would have been January or so when we were there. So it was South by. Right. And I speak Italian, you yeah. know, John and I studied there. And, yeah. Uh, you know, Sarah's kind of a linguist as well, and she spoke really good, you know, Spanish beautifully and picked up Italian quickly. And well, anyway, we meet a guy that was an agent in Italy and exchange information, all that stuff. Well, he ended up, ended up booking a tour for us okay. based in Italy. Well, then that, then soon after that, we somehow got hooked up with this bigger agent and a Sony distribution deal nice um and so we were distributed there and a bigger agent playing big shows and we you know some of them were our own some of them were opening for bigger acts and and we would stay there for months at a time and have an apartment or something and base there are you how many uh nights a week are you playing when we're doing italy oh i mean sometimes we would do 12 shows in 16 days 14 shows in good so real woodshed packed packed yeah Yeah, and i took patrice pike and trish murphy on a tour there we did 14 in 16 days cool and that was a ton of fun and um so yeah i've been going back and forth and when i say italy because that was that was the majority and always our base but we would go out and play i mean i've done you know france and yeah germany and switzerland austria slovenia all of it but yeah yeah um and then of course we did a bunch of tours when i say we i mean the ginger and sarah band okay um, in the States as well. Um, of course I've continued performing after Ginger and Sarah split, but, right. but, um, in the States and we did a, 
when, when Oprah Winfrey launched the Oxygen Media channel, yeah, uh, that's not the channel, but her Oxygen Media company, um, they put out a, a request for musicians to perform all these launch parties and stuff all over the country, and we got picked. Nice. And but you know, as per the typical music business, you're picked, but you have to pay for it. We're not paying you, Jack. You know, uh, one of those. Well, we ended up getting a sponsorship situation with. AMD, Advanced Micro Devices. Okay. So that covered a bunch of our costs. Nice. So more crowdsourcing, sort of, but look, it was more of an, uh, well, now it's not a crowd. Just go get it. Uh, that's, but smart. We put together a sponsorship packet, and this was the, this was the you know, like Y2K. Yeah. And, you know, all the big tech industry was vying for, uh, for people to work for them. And so we talked with the main person at AMD that handled this part of it and said, look, we'll make you look like, a, you know, like the company to go work for, not the stuffy, right. you know, whatever, 3M or someone right. else. I don't know. Right. And, um, and you're so on Ofri's channel. There. And we're, we're doing these launch parties for Oprah freaking Winfrey's, yeah. you know, media. And so we, yeah, it was so much fun. We played like Union Square, New York, and South Street Station, New York, and did Atlanta and Dallas and L.A. and all these places for for that. And it was a ton of fun. But so, I mean, I could go you've on traveled, and on. Yeah, so we've covered, you've traveled a I'm lot and you have a pretty big body of work. Yes. Uh, at least 10 CDs. You don't even know how many CDs Well, there are have. 10 out there, yes. Ten. And then I did, um, I have a side project that's, one of my dream projects, it's called Straight Up with a Ginger Twist. It's yes, a nine-piece. Jazz thing, yeah. Yeah, nine-piece jazz variety act. And we actually recorded one of our shows at Parker Jazz Club. And so I haven't put it out to the internets yet. Yes. But I do have it, so that would be 11. I think that's a good idea. You think I should put it out I there? I do. I really do. I just might. Okay. Good. Yeah, no, that's a whole different vocal styling, right? So I love it, though. I love jazz. I mean, I love all kinds of music, but jazz in particular, and, and female jazz singers are, are really, really worth listening to. Yeah. That it, sultry sound, you know. I, I mean, I, you know, on one of my albums, I, we did a duet split, like, posthumously with one of my grandmother's recordings, and she was probably Ooh, about 16. And, that's and, cool. And it's the song... Uh, that's my desire. We'll sip a little glass of wine. I'll gaze into your eyes divine. And we did a duet split, you know, and it was, it was the moment Dave Madden played the. You got to do it, like have a duet with your grandma. That's yes. You that it's, and who's passed, obviously, and yeah. as a 16 year old, that, and that's what we get. I, that reminds me of the Nat King Cole with Natalie Totally. Cole same, yeah. same concept. Yeah, exactly. And Dave Madden cut the piano part that would be my part because we didn't have separate tracks of hers, just mm. the, just the song. Right. And it's her and a piano player. And uh, he played the part exactly like the original player. Dave Madden is so talented. Sure. And when he sent me the track that had the vocal holes in it where I would sing, mm -hmm. so I'm hearing my grandmother and then I'm hearing the spot. I was driving on Mopac, I'll never forget. And I mean, just, boom. I mean, just tears went streaming because it, it was so special. So yeah. it's really cool. That is really um, cool. But anyway, so yes, I have uh, straight up with the ginger twist. I, I probably will end up releasing that material at some point. And we're running out of time, so but I, I want to talk real quick about um, when you were in Rent because that's a big deal, man. That's a that's a hard musical. Those are challenging parts. I'm, I come from yep. you know I come from theater. I've done some musicals. They're not easy. <laughs> that was probably a highlight. And and if Dave Stakely were to call me up tomorrow and said I want and say I want you to come audition for this part, I would run there. Uh huh. I absolutely. Yeah, Dave's very talented. Man. He is so great to work with. What a great director. The theater itself is fabulous. Yes. Um, at the time that we did Rent, the Top for Theater wasn't there yet. Okay. So we were in the I forget what it's called right now, but the. Uh, no, the no, biggest no. theater that they had yeah. at the time, <laughs> I did get to perform at the top for for Bobby Topfer at one of the big events and came out from under the floor and I was in a gown and I was doing Diamonds Are Forever, <laughs> so fun. But anyway, <laughs> Rent. So prior to Rent, I had been John Pointer uh, auditioned for in Jesus Christ Superstar and he got the part for Judas. That's incredible and killed Man, it. That killed Judas it. is the hardest. 
in the best part ever, probably, you know, and Jesus is like equally, almost equally, but Jesus' yeah. part's just Well, a and he, he stole the show, and they they did offer me Mary Magdalene, and, but I already had a European tour book that paid right. a lot more. Right. <laughs> and I didn't want to be <laughs> unprofessional and cancel everything, so yeah. I, I turned the part down, unfortunately, but then Rent came up, and yeah. it, it probably was John that said, you know, Colin Ginger, and I auditioned for Maureen. And uh, got that part, and John was Roger and Rent and uh, Courtney Sanchez, uh-huh. Courtney Santana, <laughs> yeah. uh, was also in the show. So it was really brilliant of Zach and Dave specifically to bring in, you know, local musicians right. uh, to perform in Rent. And and I hadn't done theater since high school at that point, and right. I was a big theater person in high school. Me too. And oh my god, but playing Maureen, oh, it was so much fun, and her character. You don't see her character till she comes out to do the the big uh, protest performance that she's right. doing, and so I was, you know, running around backstage and outside, keeping my energy up while they're all performing the first forty minutes of the first right. set. Right, right. And then finally, Maureen shows up, and it's a f- about a five minute, I think anyway, mon- monologue yep. with cho- choreography, with screens happening and lighting and all the production yeah. and stuff. And that's the first time I'm up there on stage is just me, yeah. Right, and um, some of the cast was uh, situated in the audience as people being in the audience of the show. But right. I mean, it is my moment, and boy, that was nerve wracking. But it was so absolutely fun. Oh yeah. Um, I only forgot my lines once, but I got through it. Yeah, that's good. You know, you just kinda... I forgot. I mean, if you do stage long enough, you're gonna forget your lines. Someone else is gonna forget their lines, and you're gonna be there. Yeah. And it's the most nerve-wracking and exhilarating thing all at once. You had to cover. You had to cover. I was in a play called The Ladies Not for Burning when I was in college. And that's Christopher Fry. It's, yeah. it's, it's iambic pentameter. And I had the lead at Thomas Mendip. It was the hard, probably the most difficult, although I played Jerry in the zoo story a couple times too, which is a workout. But this time, this, this Ladies Not for Burning, and somehow... One of the actresses starts saying her lines from the third act <laughs> in the yeah. first act. Yeah, oops. And I'm yeah. go- and I'm like, Jesus, you know, and I'm thinking, I, and I'm looking at all, if nobody knows what to do. And all, I remember there was a sound cue that I was supposed to respond to. A, a bell was ringing and, and the, my line was, sounds like it's witch burning season. And uh, so you picked and, it up. Well, I didn't hear the cue, but I, I, I said, Sounds like it's witch burning season, and then he did the cue, and we got back on. Yes, I was. I, that's like probably the greatest thing I ever. It's did very in my different life. than than that's <laughs> well done, and I'm 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 sure you have saved the day many times, but that is no. different. It's really different than when you're playing a show with your band, right? Yeah, I forget my words on stage, songs that I've written, all that stuff. Uh, and you know you can you it's your audience right yeah. so you can laugh with them about it. I ask them what are the words? Where am I? And right. they'll be like it's yada yada, or totally. the bandmates will say it. But so you know it's different when you're when you're doing stage theater and you forget oh, yeah. and you get off cue. Oh. And I mean the production guys had to catch up with me because I just lost a chunk of time and uh-huh. like, you know and they're like okay these are the wrong screens and but. Nobody noticed, and it was fine. But okay, yeah. besides that one flub, it was probably one of the highlights of my performance career. I loved working with right. John and my right. friends and the rest of the cast, and of course Dave. Uh, I love to dance, and that character too is—it's kind of typecasting. I'm very much like yeah. Maureen. Um, one of her big, big moments a duet with her her partner in the show is is "Take me, baby, oh leave me," and she's basically saying like. This is who I am. I'm always going to be like this. I am, you right. know, and, you know, this is who I am. And if you love that's, me like this or don't, that and is, I'm, that's very much who I am. It's very <laughs> much. And uh, I just want to thank you for coming in today. It, it's been a pleasure and, and bringing John and Stuart with you. It sounds so great. Uh, can you uh, do one more tune for us? Absolutely not. Please. Okay. I'll All right. I, I have to make you beg, Carl. I will beg. <laughs> I'm teasing. Yeah, I'd love to. Okay, great. What's it gonna be? I want to do "Charge Laughing." It's a song that is. That's your. That's your closer. It's our. It's our anthem. It's our closer. I stole the the words. I charge laughing from E. E. Cummings. And oh, E. E. Cummings, yeah. man! I love E. E. Cummings. Me too, big the fan. only poem that I can recite 
it, it, by anybody, even my own poems, I don't really know how to recite. But like, he had one poem, Buffalo Bill's Defunct. <laughs> Who used to ride a water smooth silver stallion and break one, two, three, four, five pigeons just like that. Jesus, he was a handsome man. And what I want to know is, how do you like your blue-eyed boy, Mr. Death? Whew. That's E.E. Oh. E. Cummings. Well, so. I have an E.E. E. Cummings tattoo right here that's my grandmother's handwriting. It's one of his most famous ones, but... You know, before she, when when I could tell she was getting toward the end of her life, it says, I carry your heart, I carry it in my heart. And it's her handwriting, and clearly I had to write it before she passed away. <laughs> that would be some powerful <laughs> shit yeah, right there. Yeah, I was going to say, we'll happen to do another episode to, to, to see how to she talk got about that, that on you that after she passed away. Moment, yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so I, I'm a big fan of E. So I, I use the words I charge laughing, and I, I wrote it when I was at an artist residency castle place in Umbria, and mm. uh, and it's you know it's about getting past struggles in a positive way, and uh, yeah. and it's a crowd pleaser. All right. Well, people of the world, lie flat on your backs, take the blow, spit it out, and. Simply relax because life's like this and I laugh maniacally And I know I come across sarcastically But this is what connects you to me It's my toll that you don't know if you should take seriously Ginger Lee Band, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, guys. Stuart Cock and Johnny Pointer. Ginger Lee. Ginger, what's your uh, what's your website? GingerLee.com. No, if you do that, you're gonna get to my porn site. <laughs> oh well, you might want to do that too. <laughs> With a name like Ginger Lee, you know, there's got to be a porn star. Uh, <laughs> that's where I make my real money, you know. There you go. No, my website is GLee.com. G L E I G H dot com. Please hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't yet. That does us some good. And uh, if you've been listening to this podcast and want to watch it, go to YouTube and go to the Songwriters Across Texas channel and find this and others. Thanks again, guys, Ginger.